Hello and welcome to another Flights with Joel. This is a very special edition as I have been waiting for a 206 in Microsoft Flight Simulator for quite some time. If you've ever seen my Twitch channel, you know this. So I'm very excited to not have, not only have one, but two 206s, two 206s to go over today. It's amazing. A big thank you to the developers Fly Inside and Cohen Simulations for putting their product on the market and for uh, allowing us to finally fly a 206 in Microsoft. I'm going to start here with the Cohen Sim Bell 206. The 206 has an incredible history. You've probably seen one. If you've seen a helicopter, you have most likely seen, at some point in your life, a 206. They're the third most produced helicopter in the world. This one has opening doors. It has a fantastic see-through engine panel. Let me see if I can get in there a little better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you'll see it better on the other side. It has blades. It has animations almost of almost everything. I'll show you in a bit what I'm talking about. It has lights. Um, I put floats on this. We have several different options, which I'm going to go over. We get free updates. It's been tested and zeroed by real pilots. Realistic startup procedure, uh, which I'm going to go over. We're going to do, for both helicopters, we're going to do a startup, a little bit of a fly around, and an attempted auto rotation. For now, I'll just say attempted auto rotation. CohenSim has a SAS autopilot when AP is available for helicopters. It uses the flight dynamics now built into the simulator. It has pilots and passengers, floats, 75 liveries, dynamic weight options, spotlight will be functional at a later update, spray kit, which will be functional at a later update, Cineflex camera, which will be functional at a later update, WY is fully dynamic sound pack, and I do like the sounds. I'll say that right now. Realistic flight dynamics, 4K PBR textures, custom 3D instruments, detailed night lighting. We will talk about the flight dynamics um, and, and the different things uh, as we move along here, as we get into it. Let's jump inside. So here we are inside. And um, I just realized I forgot to put turn something on, but that's okay. I'll do it in a moment. Uh, the doors are obvious. They, they, the way they work is obvious. Let's, let's have a listen. Nice. Nice. Um, in the back, let's see. There we go, in the back. I set up some cameras to uh, get around quicker. There's a great video on Two-Tone Murphy's. Go to Two-Tone Murphy on YouTube and you can see the video on how to get around. The details inside are fantastic. Uh, on both helicopters. And, oh, there it is. There's my track IR. Okay, jump back to the front. Back to here. Now, if you uh, want to get rid of, here's there's a lot of cool things in the weight, weights and, and uh, weight and balance area. First, let's just look around here a little bit more. Um, the headphones look very nice. Very nice. You have uh, your outside air temperature up there. You also have it where it, um, you also have it down here once we turn it on. You have two GPS units. Now they're almost identical, um, but you do have full avionics. You could do IFR in an emergency or if you get you could do if you get the um, autopilot set up, the windows open as well as the doors. Not not very loud, but they open. And there's the panel. Now I've had a hard time getting the panel set up on my um, 
on this, I've had a kind of a hard time. It works with my, it works with my track IR just fine. So there it is. And you'll notice as I go along, I'm not going to do a lot of uh, nitpickiness. I'm going to let you decide. I'm just showing you the two helicopters and you can uh, kind of decide for yourselves well, wh which one is what, what I think I will use. It, this, there's these two things, they're so feature rich. Ah, I'm getting confused already. They are so feature rich that it's a little bit hard to go over them all, to go over two of them in one video. So I'm not going to, I'm going to just, you know, delve into the surface. So we're, I'm going to show you now. This is nice. When you go into the weight and balance, you need to make this much smaller for it to work, but then I can't read it. Um, here we go. So this is where you do everything. Um, it says what you need for different positions. So for a co-pilot, you need a, at least 100 pounds. Whoops, not 1,200. At least 100 pounds. And, and then uh, if you want to add passengers, we'll add a passenger. Again, you need at least 100 pounds. Uh, you can add a searchlight. Let's add the searchlight. You need 30 pounds or more. So let's put in 30. A spray kit, you need 400 pounds. So as you can see, it's it's starting to get heavy. Starting to get kind of heavy for the... Heavy? You need 120 pounds for the camera. Look what's happening down there. For floats, which are already on there, you need 120 pounds. So now we're at 29.25. Our max gross weight is 3,200. We're fine. We're just fine. Look at that. Look at that. So the spray cut, spray kit comes with the hopper. It actually looks beautiful. I have to admit, this is the first time I've put it on. It is the first time I've put it on. I love having cameras on these helicopters. Uh, and I really like the uh, the night sun or the flur. I also like the exhaust ports on this, having some wear on them. One thing that bothers me about all aircraft, and this one is no exception, is that they have very little wear, all the Microsoft aircraft. It's hard to get that, I guess, it's hard for developers to get that wear that we usually see, um, like in an X-Plane, they, they have some very nice, scruffy looking aircraft, which I think is really fun. Um, we'll go here now and see how easy it is to get to that. This is Floby, it's a whole nother thing. You can, not Floby, <laughs> Flow. I call it Floby the other day. It is not Floby. So I'm gonna get rid of the spray kit. I'm just gonna do that. Okay, got rid of the spray kit. Whoa, whoa, that should do it. It didn't do it. Oh my, uh-oh. Oh, because, what? Am I in the wrong? I want the camera, searchlight. Well, it, um, I thought it would, it would go right off. There we go, but the, oh, the spray kit came back. Okay. Try that. Nope. The spray kit doesn't want to go away. Would you look at that? It's the first time I've opened it, and now it won't go away. Go away, spray kit. Zero pounds. There it is. Okay, I just had to play with it a minute. That's how you add and subtract things on the helicopter. Let's see how this one starts up. Um, there is, in fact, a checklist that comes with it. There is the check with the Cohen Simulations 206 B3 um, interior and pre-start list. Now, I'm not going to go over the entire list because it is um, very nice, very, very nice, very much like real world, and it has a lot of checks on them. There's a lot there. Uh, so rather than do the entire checklist, I'm going to do kind of an abbreviated checklist because it already is, it already takes a minute to get this thing going. So first off... Am I in my sim? No, I wasn't. We'll turn the battery on. And um, we will turn the anti-collision light on. And this is already this is set on start. We need that set on start. Uh, I'm going to wait for the avionics until I actually have it cranked up. So it should be... Oh, also what you need, you will need to make sure that these booster pumps are in. So look at that. These work. Isn't that nice? They all work, okay? Just keep that in mind when we go to the next one. Uh, here we go. So for start, this one is, what is the word? 
it's semi-realistic. Unfortunately, because the um, because Microsoft doesn't have a way for you to, to map this to your uh, controller yet, you have to do it with the mouse. And that's really too bad. That's one advantage of the flying side. It works differently. So I, you are able to map the start key. When you start it, what you're looking for is for the gas producer to get up to 15, then you induce fuel. You have to watch the turbine output not to go too much past the yellow. You only have about a second into the red or you're gonna get a hot start and you need to turn everything off. Uh, you're also want to watch your pressures as we go. So it's a, there's a lot going on. Read the checklist r before you start. Read through it and understand it before you actually start up. And then once uh, we get this going, I'm going to tell you a little secret. So here we go. Coming up. Passing 10. And as it slows down, induce fuel. Okay, there's a couple of things you might have already noticed. You don't, this kind of pops up on its own. So you can't actually get a hot start in this. You can't actually get a hot start. What you can do though, is you can control the amount of throttle, which is hard to do on the reg, on the 407. So you can keep it at 60 or 70. Uh, there is a mod for the 407 that allows you to do this a little better, but this is more, this is even more accurate. So it allows you to do those things. And then coming in here, and this is where you can see your outside air temperature. It's 58 degrees because I don't have real weather on because I'm shooting a video, darn it. Uh, that's your volts, 26. And when we go here, should be able to, there it is, start that. That is not quite working right. I don't know what's going on there. Now it's doing something weird. So I can't get this to work 100%. See that? I, I've never done that before. That's a new one. That is new to me. Okay, let's go back up to the panel. And this goes to generator. Avionics on. Don't need the heat. We uh, need this. And this is where I was talking about where it's a little hard without my track IR to, to uh, get to everything. So there we go. I'm not sure why that is. All fuses in. That's what we're looking for up here. Everything should be in the green. We want to uh, set this at just about 70 while we uh, make sure everything else is going right. So I'm a little blind, so I have to zoom in. So we're over 70, but that's got to be at 70 for a minute. Unfortunately, this isn't working right. So I don't know what a minute's going to be. I think it's already been more. Uh, let these come up. I like these new... GPS's they actually have to acquire satellite so I guess this is so if one goes out you've got the other one because they're identical they are identical um, you do have a lot of signage around E and back here you've even got the helicopter flying handbook now it doesn't come out but it does remind you that if you want to know really know about helicopters how to fly and what, what you need to learn look this up this is on the internet, helicopter flying handbook. You can get that from the FAA. Doesn't cost you a thing. It's actually pretty, pretty cool. Okay, so here it is from the outside and I already forgot a few things. <laughs> but uh, it does have articulated rotor system. I forgot to show this. So the um, animation for the rotors and tail rotor and main rotor works for the pedals and it works for the um, collective the cyclic animation doesn't actually work but the um, collective does and the cyclic does so you do get some animation there it's mainly what you um, things you would do to check it out before you start and i didn't open the panels because the panels don't open now let's open this so that sound is nice and this So the sound difference is great. This, um, overall, I do like the sound. It's pretty neat. 
Uh, oh, I will need to. I, I will need to turn this up. I haven't experimented with trying to take off before it's turned up. Let's try it. What happens if I just try and take off? Ah, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. It won't take off. So that's great. And this, you're supposed to keep this under 40 as you turn it up. Uh, keep that torque under 40. Uh, I just yanked it up. That's really not the procedure. You turn it up slowly. It's a little harder if you have to use your mouse. And it's an unfortunate, this is a Microsoft um, functionality right now that we don't have quite yet. So let's bring it up into a hover. Once I get it into a hover, it's gonna be a little difficult to see. Here's what I'll do. I'm gonna bring up the replay tool. And so we can see the hover for just a second. Once I do it. If it will start, there it is, record. Okay. So I'm putting in pedal already, putting in uh, left pedal. Because it's an American helicopter. Here we are. I should be able to get it into a nice, oh, I forget. It leans quite a bit. It's got a leaning tendency, so it makes it like I'm huge. There we go. There's the hover. We'll just taxi over a couple of feet and set her down, and then we'll see what that looks like on the replay from the outside. You do have to fly this like a helicopter, um, which is true with all the new helicopters. Now, I assume it would be like the 407 and the Cabri in that you can turn off the, um, or you can turn on rudder assist and make it slightly easier for yourself. I'm just looking for the, um, the replay tool. So it does definitely look like a helicopter in a hover. It does, it needs uh, very precise movements. Sounds fantastic. I think it sounds good, oh look, look at the exhaust. Look at that. Whoops, kind of a little bumpy uh, on the set down. All right, so it is not in, it is not recording anymore. We'll just fly around a bit. So now I'm gonna basically fly it, get it up to speed, a couple turns, and try an auto rotation and, and uh, finish up the fly inside portion. So you really have to get some movement before you climb. And this, um, I think this is better than the, well, I don't know if you have the mod for the 407. If you just have the 407, you've never um, modified it, then this flies better than that, in my opinion. You can see, I can put it, I'm putting it in yellow and I can leave it there. I can pretty much leave it there. I'm trimming the using the trim features which if you don't know about see my previous video um, if you have if you don't have a spring stick 
if your stick does not have a spring, you don't need to do any of that because it'll just stay where you where you want it. Those trims, I think, are very much for um, folks like myself who don't have a professional helicopter setup. I'm not going very far. I'm just trying to get enough altitude so I can attempt an auto rotation. And that is just about enough. Um, this does not have a lot of power. I'm not sure where to, uh, which like area is the best for, for getting to Cohen Sim. Maybe they'll watch this. Um, it seems a bit underpowered. It should cruise at about 100, 110. It barely gets there in the yellow. It barely gets there. So um, in order to do an auto rotation in this, I have to uh, get, I have to go here. And I have to be fast. So, because I have to twist this, twist this down and drop the collective, whoops. A little radical. Uh-oh. I'm going too fast. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Slow it down. Slow it down. Now, as you can see, the rotor doesn't go back into the green. It's not doing what I expect it to do. And I'm going to hit the fence. I'm bringing it back in. Nice and easy. Okay, that was not good. I nosed it over. I nosed it in. Not good. So I needed the flare needed to be a lot more. And uh, we will now watch. Let's let's watch the replay. Listen to that sound echo across the valley. That's cool. Now let's see how the replay tour works. I, I don't think the gauges are gonna work. I don't think they're gonna work. I may cut this out anyway. You might just see it a different way. Replay over. Um, so that was unsuccessful. I really need to practice my auto rotations.
bringing it back up. Now that should have shut it off, but it didn't. Okay. There we go. I'm just going to go back and park and shut it down. I do like the volume of this. It um, Interior volume is more like you've got headphones on already. So I kind of like that. I don't like that it leans to the left like that. Maybe the... Maybe they used one that does. There is a little helicopter company here. That's why I picked this. This is a Microsoft flight simulator scenery with both helicopters and all the more realistic helicopters. You do have to kind of take your time with things. I am used to just slamming things around because you could do that with the older, with the uh, helicopters we've had so far. Um, but this, you got to be a little more delicate. So I am working the controls. I am working them hard. There we go. That's, oh, that's better. Okay. That's more like what we want. Right there. Just a little bit off. But pretty close. And uh, shutdown procedure. We're not going to... We're going to do most of it. So you can see it. I'm glad they have a horn mute. So you would wait for another minute at about 70%. I don't believe I'm going to harm anything by um, shutting it down all the way. But we'll wait here for a second while we shut off uh, the position light. I think everything else would stay on uh, for this one. We can open the window. It's a nice warm day in the imaginary. There we go. Listen to the shutdown. And then, oh, I have to hit that. It does have, a, it is locked out. So that does actually work. There we go. Now it's, it is coming down the rest of the way. Yeah, it's kind of slow. There it goes. It's kind of slow, but once it goes, it goes. Then I'll show you the animation I forgot about. There we go. Um, you, uh, I believe you popped these out. There, They were on when I got here. Wasn't me, man. They were on when I got here. Put that back to there. Put this to start for the next person. Avionics can come off at this point if I can get them to work. There we go. Little pause of the simulator. So see how that's turning there? So let's... Uh, Go up here and put the brakes on because it's uh, slow enough now. What's fun is to try and see if you can get it to, to go straight out. So there it comes. It's coming around. Try to get it to stop right. Nope. Too early. Too early. It's fun to see if you can get it to stop straight out. Uh, let's turn the rest of, the, the, rest of uh, the things off. So anti-collision off. Battery off. Again, there's a great, uh, great checklist for all this. So what I missed was, we do have animation here. See, that is the collective. The cyclic, now I'm moving the cyclic, as you can see. And I, there's none, I don't see anything. So there's a swash plate that should be moving. So <clears throat> that is not moving. The other thing is in the back. You see the tail rotor moving? Yeah, obviously. So those are the pedals. And the, the detail of that tail rotor is actually pretty good. It's pretty darn good. And, and I, I really appreciate all the liveries. And now to the fly inside. And this is the fly inside Bell 206 b Three. It has doors that open, and it has all the panels that would open. So that you can ex do a full exterior walk around as you would on the real helicopter. It also 
comes with many different liveries. And it is also a Bell 206 B3, which I've been wanting in the sim forever. So you look, you on this one, you even get the inspection panel here. I'll have to go back and look. Oh, I can't see anything in there. Hmm. Uh, but look at the detail on that. It's fantastic. Fantastic. There's the luggage compartment. More engine panels. You can uh, open up a real world checklist and do the walk around uh, and, you know, and pretty much do the whole thing with this. I am loving it. There are some features on this one that are a bit beyond, a bit beyond, above and beyond. Uh, it has revolutionary, this is according to their website, it has revolutionary and realistic flight model developed by and tested by an experienced 206 pilot who I just had on my Twitch stream. If it hasn't been six weeks, you can catch the VOD of that. A support for full helicopter flight physics, including effective transitional lift, ground effect, transverse flow, flat back, auto rotation, and more. Now, the thing you do have to know is this one requires an external app. It's really not a big deal. It's how they're able to do what I'm about to show you that they've done. Support for failures and dangerous flight regimes include vortex rain state, engine failure, and retreating blade spall... <laughs> Retreating blade stall, detailed 3D model with high quality PBR textures, animated drive, live inspection doors with 3D turbine transmission and internal models, openable doors and windows, dynamic and adjustable night lighting, realistic startup and shutdown procedures, fully interactive cockpit with full system switches, circuit breakers. Again, to go over all of the features um, as well as they should be gone over, I would need at least an hour per helicopter. This one has a few more features. Well, it doesn't. It has different features. It, it's They're just different. It really doesn't have more. It has slightly more realistic stuff. Um, the exhaust effect is on, which I'd never realized before. I, I never, I've never uh, seen that, that the, whoops. I've never noticed that the, the exhaust effect there is on. And uh, let's go inside and give it a startup. Here's the interior. And we, uh, we want to close all the doors and windows and stuff, obviously. Doors and latches. So to do that, you have to use the arrow keys, or if you have set something up on your controller, because um, they're, they're going to fix this. They uh, also both both companies are good with updates. I know that they've already done some updates on the fly-in side, and they have more planned once the holidays are over. If you're watching this, uh, you know, a year later, oh, this one opens too. I missed that one. I missed one. I missed one. So we've got one more. Let's go. Oh, let's close it. There we go. Uh, and go back to the other side. So I have to go back through here, and we can check out the interior here which also has a lot of cool details. We've got the flight manual for the BO3, you, uh, B3, <laughs> BO3. Uh, you can't get to it. You can't read it, but it's there. It's there. You get one, in, get one in the real world. You can find them online. Here we go, close all the panels. Definitely close this. Now, if we don't get it all closed, the, it's gonna tell us. So I'm gonna use one of my shortcut keys, jump back inside, I did forget to close the back doors. Let's close them. Listen. All righty. They like the loud. They like it loud. Okay. There we go. Here you go. Bam! Like an old Chevy. We'll uh, pop that open so we can hear the sounds even more. It uh, it's not quiet. <laughs> That's all I can say. They also have David Clark headphones. They also have them. And I'll show you a cool little feature about these because there, there's a cool feature here. There's your fire extinguisher. Your, um, is that one unbuckled? They always have the seatbelts unbuckled. Yeah, they're, they're not buckled. That's supposed to be buckled as part of a real world checklist if you have no passenger. Um, and in this case, we do not. So 
Similarly, they do have a checklist right here. I run an abbreviated checklist just to save a little bit of time. So they do have the checklists here. Okay, right there. They've got it. It's, it's there. Um, they also have a manual that explains quite a bit. It's not as detailed as some manuals that you'll see with, um, you know, advanced payware. It doesn't go into the history of the 206. It doesn't have complete checklist and performance uh, my, um, tables. Uh, they are in the helicopter. Right here is some, for instance, on the placards. Uh, this would be cool if that came out. But any hue. Um, there is definitely enough here to be able to figure it all out. I'm just opening the user manual now to make sure I didn't mess up. Um, flight controls, they have a um, flight control setup, which is really good. Very important. Flight model options, helicopter flight, startup procedures, cockpit diagram. So they do have the startup procedure, which again, if you go over that first, you will not get, um, you know, the dreaded hot start. Now I am going to do the same thing here. I'm going to do a normal startup, hopefully, I hope. And then I'm going to do a quick fly around just like I did. And then I'm going to try huh, an auto rotation and... Um, talk a little about what I think about it. So here now, you can definitely get a hot start. Start up here. Kill this. Sometimes that's hard to press because of Microsoft things with um, problems with the mouse. So if you have a complete helicopter setup, whoops, then that, that won't be a problem for you. Um, this is on start. That's where I need it to be. I always turn on the anti-collision light in all of the aircraft I'm in. You got to make sure that these are in. Oh, those were popped out. I didn't. Ooh, okay. Make sure that those are in. Usually they're in, it seems like. Maybe I, something's different today. Um, this is already on. So this gets left on. The um, hydraulics are here. That also um, is left on most of the time. That is on when I get in. We can hit uh, enter here and start the GPS. Also has GPS. Although we do a lot of following roads and rivers and things like that. Um, so I believe it's ready for me to break it. Now, what we're going to do is that we're going to hit the starter button. And we have to hold the starter button this time. At 15%, we induce fuel. Oh, and also this, because it is its own separate program, this I have programmed to my throttle. Their idle release um, doesn't work right now. I, they're going to change that, but it doesn't work partly because the people who tested it have one on their equipment. So, you know, it wasn't a big deal to them. So it's tricky because if you go past the idle release, you'll kill it. You'll kill it. You go to here to start, and then we'll see. But, yeah, so you have to start with it here. They also have the starter button programmed quite nicely. So I need these instruments. Now you're going to see what happens with the uh, turbo temperature here. You're going to see what happens when we do the start, and uh, we will try not to do a hot start on the first one. We will do one later just to show everyone how that goes. Deuce fuel. Look at that needle. Into the yellow. Still in the yellow. Come on back. Come on back. There it goes. Coming up past 40 on the N1. We need 58. And we have a start. I'm letting the starter button up. Close that window, first of all. Oh, I thought that helped more. Okay. That doesn't help a lot. Look at this. There we go. Now we can hear. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. 70%. I know this needs to come up to 70. Uh, 
There we go. So bring it up to 70. And it's so nice to be able to do this on your controller if you have an extra uh, slider. I'm using the end of my Thrustmaster throttle. The little deal on the end. Here it comes. Go to 70. And then here we need to be timing it a minute. It should have started. I mean, you can't really overwarm it up. Okay. Why isn't anything starting today? Start. That should have started. Oh, it's okay. It's this mouse thing. Yeah, darn it. I'm just going to go through them again. There's your outside air temperature. Shoot. This has worked every time, except, of course, today. All right, so we're going to guesstimate on a minute. While we're waiting for that to warm up, we check everything else. Turn everything else on. Position light on. This goes to generator. Uh, don't need the defo defogger or the pitot heat. We need the attitude indicator. Um, and we would check all of our um, fuses at this time. Whoa, I'm way out there. Sorry about that. Come back in. This still isn't, is that working now? No. That is bizarre. I don't think it's them. I think it's something else. Now, um, if I'd gone through the entire checklist, which I, I should have shown you this on the coincidence as well, but this works. Uh, every button in here works. Every button uh, and switch has a, f it functions, even the vents, which don't really matter, but they do. My only complaint again, and it's not really a complaint, it's just a, a pet peeve, a small thing. Um, I would also like to have the, um, a little wear, which they're gonna do in an update like they did with the 47. They're going to bring out some more worn textures. So I, I guess that's more difficult to do. It's something they don't do at first. So we have a brand new helicopter. Um, another cool thing is this is a two-way switch. So you have low and high. I didn't even turn these on in the other one. The other one you do. Oh, I thought it was. Oh, again, this is probably a mouse thing. I swear I had both. Oh, there we go. Nope. Nope. Okay, I was wrong. I thought you had a three-way switch there. Uh, flying two new 206s. You know, maybe I get confused. Let's crank this up. Now, now here, you don't want to wear out the engine. I haven't broken any yet except with hot starts. So on the torque gauge, you don't want to go past 40 as you bring this up the rest of the way. So when it gets up near 40, you let it uh, rest. Here it comes. Listen to that. So this is what we're looking at. Power and the, the um, engine and rotor torque rotor are on. They're mated because this does have a governor. You don't even have to turn it on and on, on and off. And if you want to do real-world procedures, I'll show you. So another thing you do, I uh, think we're pretty much ready for takeoff. Everything is secure. And another thing we can do now is we can see if they split. They do. And the horn goes off. So I probably didn't need to turn it down that much, but you see how the rotors split? Both of them have that. I do find these gauges easier to read. There we go. Get myself positioned. Now this takes a whole lot more, what's the word? Um, skill. <laughs> it really does. But again, I hope you can see this. You can change the settings so that if you are new to helicopters, you should be able to see this now. Um, you can change the settings on the flight model. And I actually turned it down because I was getting tired of crashing. Not crashing, but I, I, it was taking just too much energy. So I turned the stability to 20. I used to have it at, what, 5? For a long time, I had it at about 5. Um, really start from 
up here. Start way up here, and then if you're if you're new to helicopters, and then slowly slide it back. The this sensitivity and that um, is really about your controller. So get it to where it's comfortable for you, to where it's a uh, you know a comfortable flight model. Um, if you want more challenging, you can make it unrealistically so, is what I'm trying to say as well. I mean, it, it will become unrealistic at some point. It, so it's, it's a hard line. If you've flown helicopters, of course, you have a, a real heads up. Um, now, at this point, I should have already had a little bit of uh, left pedal in, just to, uh, according to Rotor Rick, the test pilot for this. And you can uh, talk to him on their Discord, which you can get to from their website, which will be in the description, website for both helicopters. I'm gonna have a final recommendation in just a moment. Okay, let's get it off the ground. So this one comes off much sooner. It comes off at about 40% torque. Just a little bit more today. Guess I'm a little heavier. And, uh, whoops. I'm a, I'm a little spastic as well. So this one does also lean. I guess it does. And it's pretty good today, but you'll notice a little bit of shake. When you get it into any kind of situation that it shouldn't be in so much, there is some shake, which I love. Absolutely really adds to the immersion factor. So here we go. There's a nice, I'll do the same thing. I forgot to, t I forgot something. So let's turn on the, uh, Recording. I'm going to record this one so that we can see the um, hover from the outside once I get it perfect. All right. Little hover. There we go. That's nice. Nice and steady over the pad. In some ways, it's easier. I mean, if you were a helicopter pilot or you've flown helicopters in the sim a long time like I have, in some ways it's easier when they're more realistic, right? Because they do what you expect them to do. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to come over here and set it down so we can check out the hover from the exterior view. I know uh, if you're really a fanatic, you won't be in the exterior view much, but I, it's fun. This is something you can do as well. There we go. Set it down nice and easy. Try not to be tipped back. Um, they are going to be introducing a lot of things in updates. This is not going to look good, I'll tell you that right now. They will be introducing a lot of things in updates. Okay, now we'll just uh, do a nice little flight. Need to pick up really just over the fence. We don't need, we don't want to go straight up. We're just going to bring it over the fence and let it get some forward motion. And that fence is even a little high for helicopter uh, taxi, hover taxi. That's a little high. So now we're doing a takeoff. See, we're already getting some speed. This one gives you much more of a feeling of um, transitional lift. You really feel it right in about there. What you feel is that you don't need the, the pedals anymore. You really feel that. And you mean, this also does have trim with the helicopter controls, but you need very little of it. It needs a lot less trim. It will cruise at about 110. I've experimented with it. I've flown around quite a bit. It's a very fun thing to fly. I'm not going to trim much at all because I'm just going to slow down in a minute and try and kill, do an auto rotation. Look at the nice logs. This is all a Sobo, by the way. It's nothing, no additional scenery needed. So I need some 
altitude. There are so many helicopter areas to fly around in now. So many. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but not only the not only have the moderators and add-on developers added many, many sceneries with um, with helicopter helipads and helicopter areas, but um, built in now there are quite a few helipads. So I believe I might be speaking out of turn here. Um, it's up to a Sobo when these come to Xbox. If you're an Xbox user and you're wondering about this, it really has to do with a Sobo. Uh, both of them, um, as far as I know, are submitted. So this time I'm going to give myself a little more room. Because this one really... It's not very forgiving, I'll just say that. It's not very forgiving. Um, we're going to now do an auto-rotation. The cruise in this is beautiful. Nice and steady. You feel like you're flying a helicopter. Okay, let's uh, chop this. There we go. Now, watch the uh, rotor RPM, how it will go back in the green. See, it'll stay in the green, and you'll need to bring, bring your collective up a little to keep it in the green. So that's all correct. I am still too fast. 60 to, 55 to 60 is what I understand. Yep, see, I'm getting a little... There we go. And left pedal, left pedal, left pedal. Come on, dude. This, maybe I'll make it. Maybe I'll make it. Okay. I think I'm starting the flare too early, so start flare, bring it back in, too fast, too fast, oh, oh, get, oh shoot, oh, okay, that was, that was, that was not good, I, I am in one piece, let me, tell you, let me kill this, there we go, I am in one piece, but I wouldn't be, if that was, if this was the actual helicopter event, I would be smashed, uh, I may have lived, but I think I would have a hell of a headache. I'm going to keep practicing that. Let's go shut this one down uh, and, you know, let the mechanics have a good look at it. We'll just um, take it back over here. Oh, wait. Now, this one won't even begin to take off. Isn't that? Listen to the sounds. Ah, uh, isn't that great? Okay. Let's turn it back. Let's get that rotor back where it belongs. Don't go over 40. Come on, flights. Ah, there we go. We're ready to roll. Did I forget anything? Yes, I forgot quite a few things. Both of these have fantastic night lighting. Um, I was, I, I failed in showing you the first one, we'll go ahead and put it on, uh, get it dark here and show you the light lighting on this one, on the fly inside. The uh, Cohen Sim also has knobs for lights, so you could dim them, turn them up and down. And I like that they're, they, um, they have things in different places, the Cohen Sim and the fly inside, and that's what you're going to find in the real world because, you know, everyone's different. Every helicopter is different. Every 172 is different. Okay, that's about where I'm supposed to be. Let's get down a little lower. But now you're seeing the, the shake. And it's not me. That's not me shaking. That's the helicopter. Uh, ground effect is very obvious. It might be a little overdone, but I don't think so. I think it's sweet, just perfect. There we go. They also are talking about um, also talking about floats in future models and um, all those all those other nice things. So now we bring this down. Grab the horn. Bring it back to 70. Let it rest a moment. We'll bring the position light off. You know, he's already off. Everything else I leave on until it's shut down when I can forget everything. So we'll hang here for just a minute. Use your checklist, kids. Don't f do... <laughs> do what I say. Definitely not what I do. That is silly. That is silly. Uh, I did, I did want to show you 
how nicely this shuts down. It, it does work differently, but everything works. We'll get some air in here. The sounds are fantastic. Okay, shut it down the rest of the way. There it goes. And there is no actual latch, so it just shuts down. It just kills. Kill, kill, kill. Right up here. Now we can kill everything. Turn that off. Put that back to start. Leave the anti-collision light on and the battery on until the rotors stop. Pull the fuel. And rotors are already at a spot that we can turn that we can turn the rotor brake on. Whoops. Oh, that's odd. One of my one of my saved settings is not where I thought it was. Oh, shoot. Okay, we'll just go like this. See, this one actually works more like a rotor brake. Let it come around there and catch it. Oh, same exact spot. Same exact spot as the uh, Cohen Sim. Sorry about these. I memorize. I have things memorized wrong, and I have my head headgear, my headgear on. So everything else turns off now. All off. That's off. That's off. Whoops. Come on. All right. Everything off. That did not work. What I was trying to do. Maybe you saw it. Maybe I edited the doubt. Here we go. Thank you for watching another Flights with Joel. Two 206s for the new year. Thank you very much, Flying Side and Cohen Sim. I sure appreciate you both putting out helicopters. Um, you can support me uh, by following me on Twitch. You can support by hitting that follow button and like button if you like this video. And we will see you next time.